This is ProBlogger. Hey, hey, it's Darren from ProBlogger. Welcome to episode 177 of the ProBlogger podcast. As I said, my name's Darren Rouse and I'm the blogger behind ProBlogger.com, which is a blog and a podcast and an event and job board and series of ebooks as well, all designed to help you as a blogger to grow your audience and to make money from your blog. You can learn more about ProBlogger at ProBlogger.com. Now, in today's lesson, I want to talk about getting your traffic kick-started for the new year, or if you're listening to this in a few months' time, after you've had some kind of a slump in traffic. Many bloggers struggle with getting traffic momentum early in the year. Um, Maybe it's because your readers have been away over the holiday period. I know a lot of Aussie bloggers particularly struggle at this time of year um, because a lot of their readers are away at the beach um, or have just had holidays uh, and they're not been online as much. Or maybe it's because you've been away and you've stopped blogging for a couple of weeks to have a break. Whatever the reason, whether it's uh, end of year slumps or mid-year slumps, because I know a lot of American uh, bloggers have a mid-year slump when a lot of their readers go away for summer holidays, in this lesson, I want to give you six things you can do to hopefully boost your traffic, to give you a bit of a kickstart in terms of traffic after a slump, and hopefully get things back to where your traffic was or even higher. So if you're looking for a boost in traffic, today's episode is for you. You can listen at problogger.com forward slash podcast forward slash 177 where I'll have some show notes and further reading some further listening for you as well. Let's get into today's show. Creating great content, finding an audience, building engagement, monetizing your blog. This is ProBlogger. So I got an email uh, this morning from one of my readers who said, I've had a slump in traffic over the holidays and the new year and need to get things back on track. What should I do? Now, a number of things come to mind and some of what I want to share this morning I have touched on in previous podcasts. So I'm going to refer back to those where I have done that. Um, But six things kind of came to mind and and half of them are content related and half of them are not. So I'll start with the content related ones because sometimes renewing your focus on content can uh, kickstart traffic and help to build some momentum on your site. So the first thing that I would be doing if I had just had a bit of a slump in traffic, um, perhaps my traffic had plateaued and wanted to kind of take things to the next level, is to really focus upon creating shareable content. And this is something that I definitely have talked about in previous episodes a number of times. It's a recurring theme and it's something that I think we always should be putting some of our attention into, creating shareable content. And my go-to place to work out what kind of content I should be sharing is to go to BuzzSumo, buzzsumo.com. They have a free version, they have a paid version where you you get a lot more uh, analysis, but you can type in your URL in BuzzSumo and do some analysis over the last 12 months as to what your most shared content has been on your site. I would be going there right now as you're listening and type in your URL and see what has worked in the past in terms of shareable content. And then you need to ask yourself a series of questions. You know, when you're looking at those posts that have been shared a lot, you need to be asking, you know, could I repurpose that content into a different medium? Um, Could I, uh, if I've had a blog post that's done really well in the past, been shared a lot, could I turn that into a video? Could I turn that into a slide share? We talked back in episode 117 to Donna Moritz from, uh, and she talked a lot about using slides slide share and repurposing content into slide shares? Could you repurpose it into a podcast? Could you repurpose it into a live video? These types of content, uh, if it's been shared a lot in as a blog post uh, and, and you repurpose it into one of these other types of content, the, there's a likelihood that repurposing it into a different medium will be shared a lot too. So that's the first question. As you're looking at what's worked in the past for you, could you repurpose it? Another uh, question to ask is, could you update it? Could you do a second post? 
podcast with um, a fresh take on that particular topic for 2017. So one of the posts that I'm going to rewrite for ProBlogger is a post that I wrote last year that did really well, which was about the um, blogging tools and resources that I was using in 2016. That, that post got shared a lot, so I'm going to update that in the coming weeks for ProBlogger and do a 2017 version. So it may be that you've got an old post that was shared a lot, you could do a second post on that particular topic, a fresh one. Could you apply the same format for a post that has done well to a different subtopic? So we always see on digital photography school when we do a post, you know, 21 mistakes that wedding photographers make, uh, you know, that type of post goes really well with our audience. So could we repurpose that for a different part of our audience? So 21 mistakes that travel photographers make, 21 mistakes that portrait photographers make. Could you take the same format of something that has worked and, and do it to a different aspect of your overall topic? Could you turn something that's worked in the past into a series? So could you take a post that you've written and break it down or do extend it, I guess, in some way into a series of posts? So if one post has worked really well, uh, maybe uh, tackling that same topic over a number of days, over a number of posts would be good as well. Uh, Could you do a roundup post. So if a post worked well for you in the past, could you uh, do a search online and find out what other bloggers have said on that particular topic and then do a link post that links to all of the other opinions on that particular topic as well. That gives you an excuse to link back to your post that's done well. Um, you could introduce your post by saying, I wrote this post. It's one of our most popular posts. I It made me wonder what other people have said on that particular topic. And then you could do a link post on that particular topic. I guess going back to those topics that have done well in the past, it's likely that if you tackle that same topic again, it's going to do well again. And lastly, maybe you want to approach some other influences in your space and do an interview with them on that particular topic. So again, if you've done um, something that's worked in the past, go and find out what other people have said. So this is just one thing that you could be doing to create shareable content again by analyzing what's worked for you in the past and trying to create a a new piece of content that really builds upon it or takes that, that format. Of course, you could do exactly the same thing by plugging anyone else's URL into BuzzSumo as well. So you could be analyzing other blogs in your niche to see what has worked for them and then you know writing content that's on that same topic. You know, if it's worked well for them, it would work well for you. Now, of course, you don't want to just take exactly what they've written and rewrite it. You want to find your own approach to tackling that particular topic. And you probably want to give them credit for giving you the idea for writing about that as well. And that's something I would certainly be doing. But you know, how could you extend upon what they've written? How could you take a different opinion on it? Can you write it in a different voice, for example? So create shareable content. And I would be heading, digging around on BuzzSumo at your own site and other uh, sites, other blogs in your niche to be getting some inspiration for what type of content you could be creating. So that's tip number one, focus upon writing some shareable content. And probably for the next few weeks, I would be um, setting myself a goal of writing at least one post a week that was written more in the hope that it would be shared. Now, I want all my posts to be shared, but there are certain types of content that do get shared more than others. So um, focus really upon that type of content over the next week or so just to boost your traffic to find some new readers for your blog. You're listening to Pro Blogger. Okay, tip number two is to focus upon creating something of high, high value, a mega post. And this is what we call them on Digital Photography School. I should just mention, um, if you go back to listen to episode 34, I've got um, some more tips there on creating shareable content. So just want to kind of give you some further listening if shareable content is something that you want to work on. Okay, on to tip number two there was to focus upon creating something of high value and to create what we call on Digital Photography School one of our mega posts posts. And we often will title these the ultimate guide to. Um, These for us on Digital Photography School are long posts. And I'm going to give you some examples in our show notes. We did one last year, our ultimate guide to street photography. We also did another one, our ultimate guide to landscape photography. These posts tackle 
almost like a, we, we try and write an ultimate guide to a particular topic, which are category topics. So we have a category on digital photography school on landscape photography. We have a category on street photography. And so we've decided we want to try and tackle each of our categories and write a mega long post on each of those categories. We find that when we do this, when we write these long articles, and they're often five, six, seven thousand words long, they take a lot of time and energy, but they get shared a lot, and they also stand as kind of cornerstone pieces of content as well. And when we publish these, we usually also create an opt-in off the back of them as well. So we publish them as a blog post, and you'll see in the examples in our show notes, if you go and have a look at them, at the top of the blog post, we have a line that says something like, you know, this is one of our most comprehensive posts on this topic. If you'd like to download a copy to keep and to print, um, just add your email address in here and we'll send it as well. And so not only do these posts get shared a lot, but they also get a lot of subscribers for us and and they invigorate our email list as well. It takes a lot of work to do this, but it could be a great way to kickstart your year and to really boost your subscriber numbers, but also to create some new readers for your blog because this content will get shared a lot. You could do other things with this type of content as well. You might turn it into a autoresponder series. You could create a little free course off the back of it as well. All of these things can help to build some momentum. This type of content is also really great for repurposing as well. So you might want to create a slide share deck about it. You might create some videos out of it and really base your next few months of work around this type of content. So Focus upon creating something of high value that you're going to give away to people that is going to get on their radar, it's going to be shared, and it hopefully will help to build some momentum on your site to get things firing again for you. Okay, tip number three is to launch a challenge or some kind of an event on your site, some sort of an ongoing um, project that you're going to run. Now, this could take a number of different uh, formats, I guess. Um, It might be that you decide to start a series of content on your site. So you might announce to your readers that over the next month, you're going to do a whole month of content on on a particular need that they have. Or it may be that you uh, decide to spread it out a little bit more. You're going to do one post a week on that particular topic. I find and when I launch a series of content that that gives me energy as a blogger, but it also creates a bit of buzz and creates a bit of excitement and anticipation on my blog as well amongst my readers, particularly if I'm tackling an issue that is a real problem for them or a real aspiration for them. So focus upon choosing a topic for your series that's going to eliminate a pain for your readers, and I've said this many times before, or that's going to help them to make a gain. So focus upon pain and gains and um, announce it to your readers. By announcing what is coming up, you are going to create anticipation and this gives your readers a reason to keep coming back to your blog to check it out. It gives them a reason to subscribe. Anticipation is such an important thing to build into your blog and it will also give you some energy and accountability as well to create that type of content. So um, it may be that you want to run a series. Another thing that you might want to do in addition to creating a series is build some kind of challenge into that. Build it into a community challenge. And this is where you get your readers not only to read your content over a series, but to do something in response to that. First time I did this was 31 Days to Build a Better Blog, a month-long series of content that I did that gave my readers a little bit of homework every day. I find by getting my readers to do something actually amplifies what what you're doing with your series. It gets them actually engaging with it. It gets them seeing some results as a result of the content and applying it to their own lives, which has an impact upon them, gives them energy, and they feel like they're participating in it. It becomes an event that they participate in, and this can really help to build your blog a lot. 
The other thing I say about this is that sometimes it can be really worthwhile to increase your rate of publishing content during the series or during the, during the challenge. Now, again, this takes more work, but it builds more momentum. And uh, I've done this a number of times, both on my blogs and also on this podcast, where I just ramp the content levels up for a, a defined period of time. And it may be a whole month, like 31 days to build a better blog, or uh, you might remember if you're a longer term uh, listener of this podcast. Last year, I did a whole week helping my readers to find their blogging groove. It was the Find Your Blogging Groove Challenge where I did a week of daily shows. I went from two times a week to daily shows and I gave my readers a challenge every day. A little bit of teaching and a challenge. And that really lifted our download numbers incredibly over that particular week and kickstarted things and things continue to be higher in the weeks after that when I return to my normal publishing frequency. So is there some kind of series that you can do, some sort of challenge you can do? Um, another quick example, it doesn't have to be on your blog that you do it. It could be on social media. Uh, Vanessa, my wife, uh, her blog style and shenanigans, she did does uh, from time to time, two or three times a year, she'll do a style challenge with her readers where every day she challenges them to wear a certain color or a certain style of clothes and to post their photos on Instagram. And whilst that doesn't drive direct traffic back to her blog, although she does have some blog posts associated with the challenge, it builds energy, it builds momentum, it builds some excitement, it builds engagement with her readers. And that has ongoing benefits for her site. So it doesn't have to be on your blog. I do think if you are wanting to drive traffic, you probably want to build something into your blog, but it could uh, a lot of it could happen on social media as well. Creating great content and building your audience. This is ProBlogger. The things that I've been talking about so far are really about trying to create content on your blog that's going to build momentum, build engagement, build excitement on your blog, and hopefully build some traffic as well. But of course, driving traffic to your blog, there are other things you can do as well. And one of the other things I'd suggest that you think about doing if you have had a bit of a slump in traffic is to do a big push in terms of creating guest content in other places on the internet. And traditionally, bloggers would um, call this writing guest posts on other blogs. That's certainly something that you could consider doing if you have relationships with other bloggers and um, you can see opportunities to create blog posts for their blogs. That's certainly something you can do. Now, this isn't always achievable for all of us because not all of us have the profile to get featured on another blog, but there are other ways that you can create some guest content on your blog. And if you go back and listen to episode 30, 37 of the Pro Blogger podcast. I do a whole episode on how to create guest content in other places as well. For example, you could be going into Facebook groups that are relevant to your particular blog and um, be answering questions there and to be writing tips and tutorials and posts in those Facebook groups. Now, it's not about trying to get people just spamming your links into these Facebook groups. You don't want to do that. It's going to get you kicked out of the group. But if you are prolifically useful in that group, people are going to want to know who you are, and that will drive some traffic back to your site once they begin to investigate that. So if, if creating guest content is something that you want to learn more about, you might want to go back and listen to episode 37. Uh, just find us in I. In, uh, iTunes if you're listening there or if you go to problogger.com forward slash podcast forward slash 37. Also check out 36 as well because I do a, uh, an episode there about building your profile and building traffic through commenting on other blogs as well. And that's kind of related to this. It's really, I guess, you could be leaving such useful comments and such detailed comments, such generous comments on other people's blogs that that could be almost considered creating content on their blogs as well. So listen to 36 and 37. So it's really about trying to identify where are your where are your potential readers hanging out and how can I build some value in those places, either through leaving comments, writing content, or being useful in those types of communities. That's tip number four. Do a big push on creating guest content. Number five tip, and I've only got two more to go, is to focus upon warming up your email list 
or warming up your other social media profiles. Sometimes we have a slump in traffic because our email list or our email marketing or our social media marketing has become cold, either because we haven't been doing it or because we haven't been doing it effectively. And one of the things that you might want to think about is how can you warm up the relationships that you already have with your existing readers? If you have an email list, you've got people who have said to you, please email me. And if you haven't been emailing them or you haven't been emailing them in a useful way, there are some ways to warm up that relationship again. One, it could be simply sending them an email for the first email for the year. Maybe you've had a few weeks off from your email, send them an email. Include in that email something useful, something that's going to enhance their lives in some way, something that's going to help eliminate a pain or help them to make a gain in some way. And it may be linking to some content that you've written on those particular topics. It may be answering some frequently asked questions uh, that you get. Uh, I don't know what it will be for your audience, but um, send them an email. The same on, on your social media. Maybe you've just kind of been letting social media slide over the holidays. Maybe it's about re-engaging that. One of the things that I've been doing to warm up my email lists a bit has been to um, go back to my autoresponders. Uh, so if you've got an email list, you're probably using a service like Aweber, MailChimp. There's a number of them out there. Most of them have some kind of an autoresponder system, and this is where you set up a sequence of emails. I talk a lot about this in episode 70 of this particular podcast, and one of the things I've been doing over the last few weeks is to really give my autoresponders a refresh because some of them had become a little bit dated. So on Digital Photography School, I actually have scrapped um, my autoresponder series, and I'm completely building it from the the ground up. And one of the things that I'm doing in that sequence is to um, highlight and to refresh some of the older content that we've got on the site. Uh, We get a lot of new subscribers every day and they haven't seen that old stuff on our site. And so I'm building an autoresponder sequence that's all about showing them what's in our archives. So, And I'm doing a theme-based email. So in that autoresponder series, I now have an email that has, here's our best tips for beginner photographers. Here's our best tips for portrait ph- photography. Here's our best tips for landscape photography. And I'm not selling anything in these emails. It's purely about trying to solve problems and to help our readers make gains in certain areas. So um, maybe you want to go back to your autoresponder series and refresh it, or maybe if you haven't got one, start one. It is one of the best ways to drive traffic to your site. And it's one of those things that you can set up once and it will continue to run over time. Go and listen to episode 70 if you want to learn more about that. The same thing could be true within this tip to warm up your social media accounts as well. And it may be that you want to do some analysis of what you've been doing on on your Facebook page, for example. What's been working? What hasn't been working? Scrap some of those things that haven't been working and try some new strategies on that as well. How to build and monetize your blog. This is ProBlogger. Now, the last thing that I want to suggest that you do is, uh, might sound a little bit strange, but I want you to pick a fight. Pick a fight. Name something big that you want to have a big impact on as a community and announce that to your readers, something that you want to attack. Now, I've talked about this in previous episodes as well. And the, the idea here is not to pick a fight with a person, another blogger, uh, or a celebrity, or to be controversial just to get attention, but rather pick something uh, that you're going to uh, be passionate about over the, the, the coming months and that's something you want to take a stand on on your blog, something that your readers can rally around. And it may be tied to the series of posts that you want to do or the challenge that you want to run with your audience. But I think sometimes when you when you show what you're passionate about to your readers, that can build real energy with your readers. And particularly if you give them some way to join in on that. So, for example, I was talking to one blogger um, from Canada recently who blogs on the topic of fashion for mums. And she has decided that one of her big themes for the next 12 months will be around the topic of body image. And she's going to write a regular post every month 
that helps her readers to think about body image and to help them think more healthily about that and help them to um, celebrate who they are as women. She's going to do this once a month, and she's going to take a different aspect of that topic. And I really think that by tackling that topic, and that's her fight for the year, I suspect that those posts will really resonate with her audience, and she's going to build some challenges into that as well. Fights can be very positive. You know, think of the word fight as a negative thing, but actually giving your readers something to rally around, something to believe in, some sort of vision to move towards can really build momentum on your site. And so maybe there's something within your topic that you can take a stand on. And again, this might be content related, um, but and it could just be a single post that you write on a particular topic, but it could also be something that really kickstarts your year that you can return to again and again over time. Okay, I've gone through six things there and I'm sure there's a lot more that could be said on the topic. Firstly, it was focus upon creating some shareable content. Build that into your weekly rhythm. Number two, focus upon creating something of high value, a mega post, an ultimate guide to a topic. Something that is going to be so big and so impressive to your readers that they just want to share it and something that you could also use to get some more subscribers by turning it into some sort of a free giveaway with your audience. Number three was to launch a project or a challenge some kind of an ongoing series of content, particularly if it's got some sort of a challenge and uh, way for your readers to engage. You may actually want to build a Facebook group around that or something like that too. Number four was to do a big push on creating some guest content, whether it's guest posts, engaging in forums, engaging in Facebook groups, uh, create something of high value off your blog in someone else's space as well. Number five, uh, focus upon warming up the relationships that you already have with your, your current readers through email or through social media. And lastly, pick a fight. Pick something that you are passionate about and write about that. Give your readers something to rally around, something to join in on in some way uh, that's going to make a difference to them, but also the world that we live in in some way, because people love to join in on making a difference. There's six things that I reckon could just be the keys to boosting some uh, traffic on your site, but more importantly than that, giving your site a boost of energy and creating some momentum and anticipation on your site as well. If you've got something else that you've been working on over uh, the first few weeks and months of uh, 2017 or something that's got um, you through a slump in traffic and has helped to kickstart your blog, I would love to hear about it over on ProBlog blogger.com forward slash podcast forward slash 177 where you can find today's show notes a full transcription and also find all those further reading further listening that i've mentioned in this particular episode thanks so much for listening look forward to chatting with you next week in episode 178 you've been listening to pro blogger if you'd like to comment on any of today's topics or subscribe to the series Find us at problogger.com forward slash podcast. Tweet us at problogger. Find us at facebook.com forward slash problogger or search problogger on iTunes. This episode of the ProBlogger podcast was edited by the team at Podcast Motor, who offer a great range of services, including helping you to set up and launch your podcast, as well as ongoing editing and production of the podcast that you produce. You can check them out at podcastmotor.com.